Hi, my name is Jeanette and I want to thank you for joining me on the channel Jane Reads. So today I am sharing my March wrap up. So I did post a mid-month wrap up so I will link that video below. So today I'm going to talk about the books that I finished between March 16th or 17th, I can't remember, to March 31st. I was going to include a book that I was I started in March but I didn't finish it till April 1st and I really kind of debated about including it in this wrap-up or actually including it in the beginning of like April's mid-month wrap-up and I'm going to include it in the mid-month of April because I finished it April 1st and so I've got it on my April calendar when I entered like when I finished it and if I talk about it now, I might forget that I already talked about it because I'll just be looking at my April notes and be like, oh, okay, I read this, read this. So I'm sorry, but I'm going to hold off on that book. <laughs> okay, so when I filmed my mid-month wrap-up, I had read four books. So I talked about four books in that one. I finished another five books in the month of March. Did I say April? I meant March. Um, so those books were, actually, I'm not going to tell you what those books were in this video or like in this clip. I filmed little clips each time I finished a book. So I will be adding them there and then I will come back to kind of give the overview of the month. I have finished Under Scottish Stars by Carlo Lorando. This is book number three of the McDonald Family series. So book number one is Five Days in the Sky, which I reviewed back in last July, I think it was. And then book number two is London Tides, which I just finished reading at the beginning of March. So that is included in my first half of March wrap up. So I will link both those videos below so you can go back and see those reviews if you would like. So book number three focuses on Serena, who is the middle sibling between her older brother and her younger brother. And Serena is a widowed mother of two. She has an eight year old daughter and a two year old son. She has kind of a life established in the city of Nairn. I think that's how you say it. I could be wrong. In, it's based in Scotland. And she, through a couple of events that happen and stuff, she ends up back um, at her hometown, the Isle of Skye. And she ends up overseeing the hotel that her family runs. She feels like she's only there for a season of time. She arrives kind of February, March and plans to stay till the end of the summer and then return back to her home. Over that course of time, kind of as things progress, her return back to home may be up for debate. Is she going to stay in Sky? Is she going to move back home? Is she going to go somewhere else? This is what she's discovering over the course of the book. She has become, she has returned to kind of oversee the hotel. Her brother has asked her to oversee it as a family, have a family representative for the hotel because the two brothers are off in other places and can't be there. And they feel like a family member will have met her, a better um, investment in it because it's family rather than the hotel manager that's currently there that Yes, he's doing a good job. They don't have a problem with him, but he doesn't have the same investment into the hotel because it's, he's just working for them. So she arrives, meets this hotel manager. His name is Malcolm. And right from the first meeting, they don't hit it off very well. They butt heads because Malcolm's very suspicious about why she's here, what has he done wrong, why... All of a sudden she's been doing this without the overseeing for six months now and all of a sudden now she's here and like what's going on however as he gets to know her he is attracted to her and really kind of wants to get to know her and Serena is very no I'm just here to oversee it's very temporary that I'm here 
and you know we I'm your boss like we have a working relationship I'm not interested and for other reasons due to like her past relationship with her husband that had passed away she is very cautious and careful and doesn't want her kids to get invested and attached to anybody when she doesn't know what's going to happen but she is also attracted to him and it's kind of like mm, okay no but no right like she's trying her best to know well as you can expect i mean it is a contemporary romance so a romance blossoms between them michael or malcolm is very kind of very pushy very um very sweet to her and kind of shows her that yes like give me a shot like please give me a shot i really loved the flirting banter between the two of them it was really fun and entertaining and the kids really added to the story there are there's a teenager um, malcolm's niece that is very involved in the story and then serena's two younger children and just some of the conversations, especially between the eight-year-old and her mom, was just just really sweet and really kind of gave you an insight into Serena and how she's feeling. And I just really, really like that. But due to her own responsibilities as a mother, as a family member of the McDonald family, her looking after her aunt and stuff, she doesn't want to get involved into a relationship she has created a barrier between herself and Malcolm and then as he kind of starts to break down that wall a bit she becomes a little bit more attached and is like okay well like what's gonna happen what can we do like what and it really goes back and forth a bit for a while and then she makes a decision and she gets her heart broken it just the timing does not really seem to be right and can they get past that moment she kind of through the course of it during her time in sky she does kind of return to her faith that she grew up with and kind of rediscovers that faith and puts her trust in God and during that like really hard time she learns to rely on God and really put her faith in him and trust him he has her best interest at heart she makes a decision of what she wants to do and starts working for that and then things start to fall into place and I, that was just that was so sweet i loved that and there is not a sad ending this book ends happily as per most romances do and i really and really enjoyed it i also i really liked kind of seeing the brothers and getting updates on what's going on in their lives now like where they are since their books I really liked that the one thing I did not like about this book was and I mentioned it for book number two as well there is a lot of physical kissing between the two of them very a lot and described and it just it felt like just too much like no, nothing that really crossed the line it just there was too much of it for my personal liking but that's it so i gave this book four out of five stars because i really enjoyed the characters and it was a really fun story and kind of seeing more of the island and kind of the descriptions like it really felt like i was there so i really liked that part of it and now i finished the series so I finished The Blackout Book Club by Amy Lynn Green. I love this book. I really, really enjoyed my time with this book. This is a new to me author. It is a historical fiction set at the beginning of World War II. It is set in a small little town, fictional town, of Derby, Maine. And it follows four main characters, four females, and kind of tells the story from their points of view. But then you get a little glimpse of other characters throughout. It is not a romance in particular. However, 
there is a little bit of a romance in it um and one of the care like one of the characters is married so it goes with kind of her and her husband and then there is a single character who kind of at the end finds gets a relationship um sort of yeah <laughs> but i it does start slow i will say that it does start slow but i mean in the first chapter you meet all four characters like there's a, you know a page and a half for one page and a half for a second one page, right like give or take maybe a couple pages and so within the first chapter you had met all four of the main characters and then each chapter kind of flips between the main characters and I just I love the way it was done I loved following these characters and basically one of our mains is Avis is her name and she made an impulsive promise to her brother before he goes off to the European front that puts her in an unlikely position as head librarian of the small town Maine. Though she's never been much of a reader, when wartime needs threaten to close the library, she invents a book club to keep its doors open. So then we kind of follow the book club and the members and kind of how the book club grows over time and will the library still close or can they convince the person who owns the library to keep the library open I just I really enjoyed it I really enjoyed it and I mean we follow the book club and we find out what they're reading and my one of my favorite parts is every few chapters or so at the end of the chapter there's a little expert excerpt excerpt from the notebook that they keep from book club so it talks about like kind of what they discuss but then it's also told from the perspective of the writer and kind of the insights because yes they're keeping the notes for the book club but they're not really meant to be passed out to everybody so it is really thoughts and I just I loved it it yeah, I just, I love those. So I really, really enjoyed this book. I don't really know what else to say without giving it away. I'm just going to check my notes. Um, there are some tough topics covered because, I mean, it's happening during war. So it's talking about, like, some of the restrictions and kind of the blackouts that people had to experience. Like, don't leave lights on after a certain point of time at night because they're on the coast. Um... But friendships are formed between these characters and people that feel like they're alone have now found friends that back them up and help them throughout or they end up asking for help and they never thought they would or should or I just, I don't know. It just warmed my heart. Yeah. I will definitely be picking up. She has two other books besides this one out. And I will definitely be looking for those to get my hands on them so that I can read them. So yeah, that's all I have to say about this book because I just, I really enjoyed it. And I mean, it's a book that features around friendships and books. What book reader is not really going to enjoy it? I don't think I even said, but I gave this one five stars. Maybe that was obvious, but yeah, I gave it five stars. So I finished two books over the weekend. The first book I finished was Relative Justice by Robert Whitlow. I read this one on my Kindle. I consider it a legal thriller. It focuses on the law firm of Cobb and Cobb. There is the father, Carter, and his son, David, who run this law firm together. They are approached by Zeke Cadwell who has a patent for some medication and finds out that somebody or feels like somebody has copied his patent and put it forward to a major drug company. He's making money from that. And Zeke's like, this is my medication, my patent that I came up with. How can I prove this? So they start kind of looking into this a bit. Meanwhile, something happens with Carter and 
and an emergency happens. And so David's brother, Robbie, and his wife, Caitlin, come down. So they are in Wilmington, yes, Wilmington, North Carolina. And Robbie and Caitlin are currently living in Washington, D.C. Caitlin is a lawyer as well at a major law firm in Washington. And Robbie is kind of a fishing guide, works for a nonprofit, really out to, into outdoors. So they come down to be with the family and kind of events transpire and Caitlin comes on board at the law firm to help for a period of time. It starts out as temporary and might go longer, might not. And kind of, it really focused on the characters. I found this story very character driven, which I absolutely loved. There was not a lot of legal, scientific stuff with the patent and the medication and stuff. There was a bit of it, but it did not overbear the story at all. And I was able to follow exactly what was going on. I loved Caitlin. She was definitely my favorite character and kind of following her and getting to know kind of how what she's experienced and how she kind of lives makes a decision and then she is be starting to like kind of find a faith through her husband and his family and it's just it really I really really enjoyed the way it was told and I just I loved this story and I think really because I loved the character so much and the interaction it was definitely a family driven story because we have David, his wife and his two kids. And then we have Caitlin and Robbie who are a married couple. And then we have the father. So the father, grandfather, and then the really good friend Zeke who has come to them for help and kind of, they all get together. They all rally around when Carter has the health scare that happens. And they're all like kind of working with each other, assisting, like very, just very family oriented. And I just, I really, really enjoyed that. The ending even had me wishing the best for the bad guy. It was, yeah, it just, I was, I was shocked at that because I mean, this guy has copied this Zeke's patent and to trying to make money off of it. So, I mean, he's totally a bad guy. He's in the wrong. And by the end of the book, we kind of see a bit of his perspective throughout it. And by the end, it's like, wow, like, I hope things turn around for him and he has a right heart. And I just, yeah, I was shocked at how I felt about him by the end. So I gave this book five stars because I absolutely loved the characters and the family dy dynamic and the scientific side of it did not take me out of the story. So I would highly recommend reading this story. Then the second book that I read this weekend was An Invisible Patient, no, An Invisible Thread by Laura Sharof and Alex Tren Trenowski, I have no idea. There's the cover. No idea how to say those names. So this is a biography that was loaned to me through somebody at work. And sh she said, like, I found it really interesting. I think you might enjoy it. And it basically says the true story of an 11 year old panhandler, a busy sales exec and an unlikely meeting with destiny. So the back says, stopping was never part of the plan. She was a successful ad sales rep in Manhattan. He was a homeless 11 year old panhandler on the street. He asked for spare change. She kept walking, but then something stopped her in her tracks and she went back and she continued to go back again and again. They met up nearly every week for years and built an unexpected life changing friendship that has today spanned almost three decades. So basically it's a story about how Laura, who is one of the authors, who 
she was working in Manhattan and passed this little boy who asked her for some money. She passed him and then kind of thought about it, went back and took him, said, do you want some food? Let's, I'll take you to McDonald's and get you something to eat. And so then they sat down and ate. She got to know a little bit more about him over lunch. And then they, she agreed, hey, why don't we meet next Monday and I'll give you, some, I'll give you a meal again. So then they met up and then this tradition continued. So they met every Monday for quite a while and then it kind of expanded on to Saturdays. They got together and it was really interesting to see about it because the con routine continued and over time the friendship bloomed and she tried to help him any way she could without being overbearing and overstepping because he did have a mom and grandmother and that he had a very tragic story. His family was caught up in the whole drug lifestyle, selling, taking, and just so because of that, like just was strung out at times and he, him and his sisters kind of got left to fend for themselves. And as you get to know some of his story, it's like, that hurt that like I just I couldn't imagine the strength of him and at 11 years old he meets this woman who's in her mid 30s and kind of is being nice to him and not judging she is white he is black and this is in the mid 80s when this starts when they first meet and so it was really really interesting that way however I really, this is only told by Laura and Alex is just some other guy. Um, he was a longtime writer for People Magazine and so he was kind of the co-author with her. So Alex is not the boy. Um, Maurice is the boy. So the story is told completely from Laura's point of view and throughout it she says, well this is what Maurice was feeling. This is how he reacted. This is, and it was just like, really? There is a letter at the end of the book from Maurice that does say a little bit more and expands on his, but there are times throughout the book where she'll say like, Maurice told me this happened. And then I found out a few years later, it wasn't really what he told me or what he told me wasn't really the truth because he didn't want to tell me the truth because of different of various reasons. So it was a very, very positive story, but at times it really felt like Laura was trying to make herself look good. And just that just that just annoyed me. Like it was just it was all about her and what she did. And she admits like there are times throughout that she could have done better for him, could have helped him better. She made decisions that she now regrets making because they were not in his best interest and she kind of abandoned him for a little bit. And so, I mean, it was nice that she was honest about that and not completely trying to make herself look great throughout it. But it, as I'm reading it, I was just like, really? I, I don't know. I just had such mixed feelings about it. But the message of it is every little action can help somebody. Everything, every action has a reaction to it, which I really, really liked about that. Like, so personally, I gave this book three stars. It was a nice, easy read. I read it in a day and a half and I just, I really enjoyed it. And I mean, there is, there's pictures in it. So you kind of get to see a little bit more kind of what Maurice was like when she first met him and then what he is now, kind of where he's at now with his family. And so I really liked that. And I really like, I was cheering for Maurice. He really had a difficult background and made the right decisions. There was times that, you know, might not have been the best ones, 
but he, you know, he did not get mixed up in the drugs. He saw what had happened to his family with that. He was very determined to kind of follow the right path at times. And there is a climax at one point where really he can go this way or this way. Which way is he going to go? What is better for him? And he makes the decision that he goes. And so kind of knowing, like being told his story from where he came from to where he is now was totally inspiring. So I gave this book three stars because while I enjoyed it, it was an easy read. I just, at times, Laura just kind of got on my nerves a little bit because it really felt like she was trying to talk herself up. So for Chantel Reads Your Bookshelf Challenge for March, I needed to read a book that started with the letter P. So I picked up Protective Custody by Lynette Eason. This is a reread for me and it was on my TBR rereads bingo board of one of the ones I wanted to get reread this year and decide, am I going to keep it or am I going to unhaul it? Well, the decision has been made and I am going to unhaul it, but not because I didn't like it. I gave it four stars. Again, I gave it four stars the first time I read it. I gave it four stars again. I really enjoyed the characters and following them. But the reason I'm unhauling it, there is a scene in this one that made me so very uncomfortable. I was like, what did I put in my notes? Um, how did I word it? I was freaked out while I was reading it. <laughs> There is a scene with snakes in the office and it's just, I mean, it's described so well. It was like, I had to check around me and make sure there wasn't any around me. And it's not one, it is multiple. And I, as soon as I got to that part, it was like, oh, I remember this. Why did I keep this book on my shelf? Why am I torturing myself again? <laughs> If it's not obvious, I hate snakes. I cannot stand them. If we go to a zoo or anything like that, I will avoid the reptile house because I don't want to see them. Um, I will sit outside on a bench with my Kindle or my book, whatever I have with me, and let everybody else go in the house and I will join up with them after. <laughs> yeah, I just, I can't stand them. So that is why I'm getting rid of this book because I am not rereading that scene again. I tortured myself twice with it now. Okay, so we meet Carly Masterson, Matherson, Masterson, <laughs> who is a U.S. Marshal. And her and her partner have been assigned to protective custody of Judge Nicholas Floyd and his two kids, who are actually his niece and nephew, but he has custody of them. Um, he has been threatened because of a case that he is presiding over, and they don't want him to preside. They want him to step down and hand on the case to somebody else. And so the U.S. Marshals come in to protect him and kind of keep him safe over as the trial starts. What I really enjoyed about this book, we don't see it, but what I really enjoyed is Carly and Nick knew each other. Carly had been assi assigned for protective custody for Nick about two years ago. He was still married at the time and they kind of, they grew a friendship and got to know each other. It, since those two years have passed, he has lost his wife and his sister and that's when he took custody of his niece and nephew. So now there's him and the two kids that he is trying to keep safe. And then he receives this threat. So Carly and her partner, Mason, come in and are trying to protect him. I really enjoyed that we knew that they had a friendship that we got told. And so when the romance and feelings started developing, I was okay with it because it didn't happen overnight. Yes, like they've been spending 24-7 together for the last week, I think it was, week and a half the book took place. But because they'd already had that relationship that you got to know about and they are both kind of 
they both share about it from when the book's told from their perspectives. So that the quickness of the relationship did not bother me at all. I really enjoyed it. And I really enjoyed how Nick was very strong in his faith and very like, there's some events happening that could really shake his faith and like, no, like, why am I trusting God when God is allowing this to happen? But no, he's not. He is putting his faith in God and showing Carly that she needs to put her faith in God and trust him again. He has his best interest in her. So I really enjoyed this book. As I said, I gave it four stars. And the really interesting thing is when I picked it up, I didn't I didn't know who the characters were. This book originally came out in 2010. So I read it quite a few years ago. And so I don't remember a lot about it. And then when we meet the US Marshals, we meet Carly and Mason Stone. And I'm like, wait a second, I've got a book on my April TBR with Mason Stone. I'm glad I read this one first and kind of met the guy. And so the book that I'm reading in April, which is called Missing, he is the main character in that one. So will I see Carly again? I don't know. I'm real. I'm really interested now. So we'll see. So yes. So I would totally recommend this book if you can handle snakes. It is the one scene. I mean, it only happens for a chapter and then it moves on and the rest of it's fine. But yeah, I really enjoyed this one and once again Lynette Eason kept me guessing and I had suspicions but I was totally engrossed into the story and wanted to know what was going on. Okay so as I said I finished five more books in the month of March so I in total I read nine books over the month. I'm just double checking. Yes, nine. <laughs> so nine has kind of become the average. Well, is the average for the year so far because January, February, March, each month I read nine books. And every single month, which for the last three months, I've read four in the first half of the month and five in the second half. I don't know why. It just seems the second half is a better half, better reading section of the month. I don't know. We'll see how April goes, right? <laughs> Okay, so out of those nine books, I gave three of them five stars. I gave three of them, no, I gave four of them four stars and two were three stars. So, I mean, that's pretty good, I think. I'm pretty happy about that. Okay, so my favorite books of the month, the three that I gave five stars to were Aftermath by Terry Blackstock. The Blackout Book Club by Amy Lynn Green and Relative Justice by Robert Whitlow, which I read on my Kindle. So those were my three favorites of the month. I have a suspense, a historical fiction, and a legal. So kind of a very wide range of genres, but I'm happy with that. I really enjoy reading different genres to a certain extent. There's certain genres I don't enjoy, but these are kind of my favorite genres. So it's not surprising I had a favorite in each genre. Yeah. So those were my favorite books of the month. I'd love to chat in the comments below. Please tell me what your favorite read of the month was. And I look to increase my TBR because if you enjoyed it, I would love to check it out if I haven't already read it and give it a try. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video today and if you haven't already I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Bye.